guys, Dave here. Thanks for tuning in as always. First of all, I do just need to thank my newest channel member, Tom Patterson, for signing up to support what I do here. Thank you so much, Tom. Very much appreciated. As well as all the other channel members who have continued to support on a monthly basis. You guys really do keep me going. Today, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Rocket Lab, give you some updates on the company, the stock, and talk a little bit about the capped call transaction that they did do a while back because I think we have hit a pretty important milestone on that one that I don't want to go unnoticed. Before we dive into all that though, I do just have to say please like, subscribe, comment, all the YouTube things. I know it must get annoying hearing that every single time, but if I don't say it, you'd be surprised at how much the new subscribers drop off. So thank you to anyone who does decide to subscribe to this video. Okay, with that out of the way, let's just jump right into the Rocket Lab updates. So first of all, I just wanted to rewind the clock back to January 31st of this year. Rocket Lab announced a transaction where they would be basically offering senior convertible notes uh, to raise capital. And obviously, if you were invested in the stock at that time, you know that it was not a fun time. So around where the arrow was is when this announcement took place. Uh, it had a sharp drop, did recover a bit, but continued on a downward trend to around 3.5. Now, I'm not saying this was the only factor, but it was definitely a contributing factor into why the stock performed so poorly over that period of time. And understandably, there was a lot of frustration, a lot of long-term investors who had been told that Rocket Lab had enough money, didn't really like to see their share value drop. And uh, a lot of people complaining on Twitter, which I fully understand and can appreciate, and I was a shareholder at that time as well. But uh, looking at the cash and working capital chart, this from MainStreetData.com, if you're interested in signing up there, uh, we can see they did have a nice boost in cash and cash equivalents the quarter after that took place. Uh, cash was, you know, steadily drawing down and yeah, big boost. So definitely in a much better financial situation now than they were before they announced that offering, despite that pain in the stock price. Uh, if you want to look at the numbers here, you can take a look in terms of total current assets. We're now sitting at 700 million. They were dropping steadily down to 476. Cash and cash equivalents similarly were dropping steadily quarter over quarter as they invest in growing in Neutron and all the rest. Uh, they had a big jump here from 244 to almost 500 million. Nice to see a uh, much more secure financial position for the company and one that you know, the stock has now recovered. I was keeping an eye out for this because I think it is a great milestone for the company. So we're now pretty much exactly where they were right before that transaction was announced, except Rocket Lab has 300 million more cash on the balance sheet. So really great news for the company. If you're a shareholder, you should be quite happy because your shares are now worth what they were. And not only that, Rocket Lab has an extra, you know, 300 million almost in the balance sheet, much safer position. They're looking to acquire some more companies that do some payload capabilities, which would inevitably add more revenue to the top line, as well as add important capabilities in their quest for vertical integration. So I think it really should be a celebratory moment right now. We went through the pain. We now have the gain. So congratulations to everyone who went through that. And I know I personally did add shares down in the 3.5s. So if you did as well, take that opportunity to average down, add more shares. You're laughing as well. So great situation for the company right now. And overall, just happy with where the where the share price is, where the balance sheet is, and uh, where the overall company is, to be honest. Uh, this, These two charts, I think, really encapsulate the change in the company. So uh, more working capital, more cash, same stock price, good for investors, no pain, no gain, and we made it through. Okay, now after that, I did just have to talk to you guys about Archimedes because Peter Beck has kindly given us more updates on Twitter. He shared that they have just had a successful ignition systems test 
completed today as the team marches toward hot fire so this might look like the engine is firing here it's not actually fully firing that's just the ignition system at work uh, important milestone as well for that test campaign if you look larger though at the time you can see we're talking pretty late at night here so it really does seem like the team at Stennis is working around the clock to get this going. And even if you go back to that recent spin prime test that we got a tweet about from Peter Beck as well, uh, you can see even in the background here, pretty clearly it's at night. If you look a little bigger, uh, yeah, pretty clearly at night. So the team seems to be working round the clock to get Archimedes going. Great to see the progress as well on that. Clearly they're not slacking off by any means. I also thought it might be interesting to check out New, Sp New Space blog. Uh, he did make a post about the process of these engine tests and how you know it's it's a long process to go through all these fires all these simulations of different situations to get going it's not simply one hot fire and then you're done but he talked to Claude 3.5 and GPT 4.0 on the general process of these test engine campaigns Chat GPT says first you have component testing, then assembly and integration, then cryogenic testing, then the spin primes, which is the turbo pumps spinning up to operational speeds without igniting the engine. This test ensures that the pumps can reach the required speed, generate the necessary pressure and operate smoothly. It also checks for any anomalies that might occur during pump operation. Then you have the wet dress rehearsal, which is basically everything but firing as far as I can tell. Finally, you're getting into hot fire tests, you know, different durations and all that kind of thing, different pressures from what I understand to make sure the engine will perform reliably under actual operating conditions. In terms of proximity to hot fires, uh, this is one of the final steps before the hot fire test, usually conducted shortly before wet dress rehearsal and then the hot fire test. So hopefully they are getting closer. And I think New Space blog, I do follow him on Twitter and he's an interesting blog to follow if you're a fan of Rocket Lab and space in general. So thanks for sharing that, New Space. Now, we did have a recent space summit, I guess you can call it, or conference where Brian Rogers, who is Rocket Lab's global launch services director, spoke. Unfortunately, I don't have a recording of this, but I do have a tweet here from Jeff Faust. He said that Brian Rogers mentioned the company is a couple weeks away from the first hot fire test of the Archimedes engine that will be used on Neutron. So if you want to go by what Brian's saying, it doesn't sound like they're about to do that hot fire tomorrow or, you know, this week. It'll still be maybe a week or two away before that event takes place but you know very excited they are definitely getting closer and closer and i love seeing the tangible progress shared from peter i think more than you know not having the test fire happen is people just get concerned if they don't know what's going on and they don't know that progress is being made so the transparency here i think really helps to allay that and we can see you know steady progress is being made by the team also i did just want to share with you guys that the trailer for wild wild space from ashley vance has dropped he obviously wrote the when the heavens went on sale a great book i recommend anyone reading it some interesting clips shared and it really seems like you know, the gloves are being taken off on these interviews. Peter Beck and Chris Kemp of Astra clearly had a bit of a feud going on. Looks extremely fascinating. Interesting quotes from Peter. Let's take a listen to one that I think really encapsulates why Rocket Lab was a success. If Peter's not right, Peter loses. If I'm not right, I adapt. We hit something. Fuck. I'm not built to build shit. I'm going to fucking crucify him. <laughs> yeah, so just uh, Peter there saying, I'm not built to build shit. And I think that really goes to show Rocket Lab's philosophy. Everything they do is, you know, really done well. They don't cut any corners. And it shows when Electron launches. Uh, that's obviously a little bit of a different philosophy than Astra took. And I think the results have now spoken for themselves. Really excited to see that movie. And if you want to check out the full trailer, you can find it on YouTube. Finally, did just want to talk about some recent 
threads on Twitter. Now, not necessarily new information, but I do find it interesting and worth discussing. Uh, Mike Griffin, who is on Rocket Lab's board of directors and has been on their board for several years now. So going to a thread here from Tran on Twitter, talking about Mike. He actually served as the Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering and oversaw the establishment of the Space Development Agency, or SDA. And of course, the SDA contracts, Rocket Lab's biggest ever received. And, you know, I think signing him to the board of directors a couple years ago really just goes to show they've had this plan in place for a long time to go after these SDA contracts, want to make sure they have the connections in place that they need, because I think we all know that in some ways, it can still be a little bit of an old boys club. The uh, the military, the SDA, and the, a lot of these defense contracts, which has really worked to the favor of the likes of ULA in the past. And you really have to play the game if you want to get in there, which Rocket Lab has done and done successfully. Could mean as well that they're very focused on the upcoming transport layer to beta satellites. Uh, we'll see if anything comes of that, but I think it just really goes to show how focused they are. Uh, the government is still where a lot of the big money lies for space. I know that's starting to change with, you know, Amazon getting into the game, SpaceX with their own constellation, Apple with Global Star getting their own capabilities going as well, these big companies playing roles. But Still, for now, a ton of the big money does remain with government contracts and Rocket Lab very deliberately trying to capture them. By the way, IQT has had a significant investment in Rocket Lab for a long time as well. In QTEL, founded by a former CEO of Lockheed Martin, uh, their mission is to identify and invest in companies developing cutting edge technologies that can serve United States national security's interests. So this is not a new trend, something very deliberate that's been ongoing for a long time. As well, of course, we did have that retired Space Force Lieutenant General joining Rocket Lab's board of directors, strengthening those ties with the Space Force because they really do want those big national security contracts, those big dollars, and uh, very deliberate moves from Rocket Lab, and it has been paying off. So just an interesting discussion on that front, and will be interesting to see, you know, future announcements on the SDA, whether they can grab any more contracts. So that's what I have for you today. I think it really is a big milestone that does need to be marked and not go unnoticed that the company is now back at the value it was before raising 300 plus million dollars. So really great to see for the company and every shareholder should be happy about that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end, I do appreciate it. Please hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope you have a great day, a great rest of the week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.